Bernard's here. Bernard's there. It's the opening band, Bernard. That's right, take that. Open Studios, worldwide. <laughs> Joe's Arts from Sweden is here. Whoa, whoa. Like I said, worldwide. <laughs> Got two more minutes. Two more minutes. Oh, wow. Keep playing the opening music. So welcome to the studio. This is what I usually do. These are all my paintings. There's a lot of them. You can feel free to flip through them. They're just like records. You just go through and there's more behind here. I've been painting since 1999. I know you guys haven't heard this before. I've painted over 4,000 paintings. It's about 400 in the studio. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've shown a bunch of galleries. But who really cares about all that? It's more about making paintings and pictures. And as you can tell, I like that a lot because if you thought I was kidding with 300, I think you could probably count them real fast. Anybody on there with that ability? Kazlan, maybe? Do you have that ability? <laughs> I actually met that dude like, what? How many years ago in France? Yeah, a long time ago. He's Pretty not awesome. responding to you. He's not responding. He probably left. He just checked in real quick so I'd see him. And then he got scared. Good, but it's a true story. Uh, Duncan's here. Duncan's here. What's up, Duncan? Um, so yeah, this is pretty much where I store all my paintings. I just got done from filming an episode of Hoarders before this. So they just left, so I'm kind of pretty wiped up. Uh, yeah, I mean, usually I would encourage people to flip through these and look at them all. They're all on my website or a bunch of them are, so you can check there virtually. I mean, it's cool because there's people here from other places that wouldn't have made it. Uh, most of the work facing out is very new in this area here. Stuff from the last, I don't know, month or six months. I usually just work every day and make paintings and then stick them down here. Laura says, wow, you guys have been busy. Yeah, you know it. And Kaslan said 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. I think it's even more than 10 years, Kaslan. But maybe. No, actually, yeah, that might have been 2009 or 8. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've got some books and prints and other merch. Maybe we'll make our way upstairs and all. Do some demoing in the near future because people seem to like that more and it's kind of easier for me to talk about something I'm doing than kind of look through my stuff and be like, for the low price of just $40, you could have any one of these prints. That's right, I could ship it to you worldwide. There's a bunch on my site, but there's a bunch more here in the studio. Too bad you're not here to touch them and see them in person. Yeah, you guys try and do it. <laughs> we're gonna see what it's like. Laura said those are cool. Thank you, Laura. Some sticker sets, if you were nice and I liked you, I might just be like, here, you can have this if you were here, but you're not, so. Sorry, maybe next year. <laughs> Show them your book. Show them my book, I'm being directed. As you can tell, I need a handler. So I made this book of recent paintings from the last less than a year. 
all new images of the work I did in the last year. I already need to do a new book, and I think I put this out maybe six months ago or less, but you can kind of see that by all the paintings in the room. But this was all pre-COVID stuff, not that that really matters, but it's kind of, I don't know, I don't know if the vibe, the vibe is different, for sure, in creating and what comes out, because one feeds the other. A resume in the back there, condensed. I'll show you some of those paintings real quick, uh, since we're down here. How long are we down here? Uh, it's only 1.32. Four minutes. Four minutes, guys. Time moves slow on the video. I'm trying to find the other ones. I knew I have them. Why didn't I set them up ahead of time? Because I didn't really want you to see those first because they're not as nice and playful. That's one of them. Understatement. Flock with this uh, silk screen on it that I did from a drawing from the first painting I did from the series that whatever this head was an early version of one of the paintings and I liked it so much that it became a bunch of the paintings. There's one up here with the same screen. You can kind of see the repetition. It's an element I like to use once in a while. I don't use silk screen that much. Just here and there. I kind of go on rampages and then I kind of forget I even have it. I got this guy here. He was a brighter one kind of sitting towards the end when I got to go outside one day and have fun. My mom's here. Oh, well, this is mom's here. How's it going? Um. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? That's usually how it goes. Like, hey, if you have any questions about anything in the studio, you know, I'm full of answers. I'll just kind of let you walk around so I don't talk too much while you're looking. And, uh, you know, you find something, you can pull it out, I'll tell you all about it. A lot of times what I do is I write all the information on the back of the painting when I am creating it. I don't start with an idea, but i rather paint until I find things that look interesting or important, and then I start to document them, both visually on the front, and I write down stuff about it on the back of stuff that seemed important to me. Now we've got these Velcro strips kind of going over this, because sometimes I stick or on the back of paintings to stick them into frames but uh yeah so you can see some of the text i write and it's nice to keep track of where the painting was where it ends what happens but so yeah if there's questions you know i can always flip them around all the pieces on my site actually have the stories with them so you guys could actually check them out at home the info's all there for you without flipping to the back of it you could look at the front and uh read the little story of how it was created or born in a way. It's pretty abstract sometimes, but it all makes sense to me. And it's kind of a key part of my process is finding things that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of or contemplated or, you know, we all realize how we feel, but that's kind of like deep in there where you might, it might be right in front of your face, but you don't recognize it. And then it comes out in front of your face here and you're like, oh my God, that is what I was thinking about or doing or whoa, that's bugging me more than I thought it was. So that's a lot of my process. This is kind of my diary you guys are looking at. Um, Bernard, I, uh, wants, Bernard wants you to read one like a poem. Read one like a poem. Hmm. Do I need a different voice or is this voice good? <laughs> Hello, let's see. Uh oh, don't offend my other Casland over there. <laughs> Hamburger! That's my favorite thing you did when you were here. No, it was when you played drums. Someone's asking when you resume a piece, do you read what's on the back first? No. I'd rather not. I'd rather not know what's going on and see it all come together at the end. I mean, occasionally I might, but generally, no. I, I kind of like the surprise of it. Sometimes I'll paint over a piece from last year or five years ago, and it's fun to kind of see how it comes together. So, wait, here's the front. Ooh, this is a good old one, too. Wow, I didn't even realize what I grabbed. It's funny. It's like, do I even look at what I'm doing? So, yeah, this thing's from, like, what, 2006? series of piece to me. I'll tell you before I look at the back that this dude is an old cobra, serious business, old wise snake. I don't know, that's something I just knew and felt about it was like, ooh, that is just deep. And I don't really remember what these dudes are doing. He kind of looks like the Easter Bunny with an egg, but the egg's kind of like potential. I might have made the Easter Bunny thing as a joke because I saw the egg and said, ooh, who needs an egg, the Easter Bunny? So, you know, I jump in and out of, uh, funny and serious, but overall it's, it's pretty deep for me for sure. Here's some like hidden uh, strange words. I can't, I don't know, wish word, I don't know. Who knows, maybe the back will tell us what that really was supposed to say. 
But uh, amnesia, he is, it is hard to know the outcome. As you guys can tell, I can't really read. An old cobra collects eggs. They came by boat to find the new world. Now they can... It's normal to read upside down, but then it's crappy writing. Now they cannot remember where they came from. Now it is irrelevant and confused. Yeah, no, that was a great poem, Bernard, right? <laughs> I should read poems at coffee shops, I think, probably. But, uh, yeah, some are longer than others. The bigger pieces are often uh, a lot lengthier. I have one upstairs that I had more planned to read. It's not, like, super long, but it's, a, like, a very new piece and kind of relevant to the collection or series that I put up for Open Studios because I kind of treat it like a good excuse to show new work and kind of create a show and talk about whatever I've been doing most recently, which is often what I'm most excited about. And as you come through, there's some more paintings coming into our main studio. You would kind of enter through the hoarder's room over there. It doesn't end. I'll tell you guys a secret about the deep, dark basement. You thought that was a lot of paintings in there, but it's kind of hard to see in this, but this is the hoarder room. This is the room they're trying to get me to get rid of this because it smells like cat pee. Oh it doesn't God actually God. smell like cat pee at all. There is no cat pee. It's very clean, but there is, as you can see, a horde of stuff. These paintings continue all the way back to the wall. These are actually all the masterpieces. See how these all look the same color? All these go together like a puzzle and form a four by eight foot painting. There are probably 20 or 30 or maybe more <laughs> four by eight, four by six, eight by eight, 10 by 10 foot paintings, all puzzle pieced back here, along with a bunch of my canvases. <laughs> so. Luckily I made this my job 17 years ago, so I didn't have to snap and go crazy and cause problems for the world. I just get it all out here. This is a painting I did a couple years ago. A lot of people like to think this is Trump. It is not. I only say that because it is true and I do not like to paint about politics. That is the haircut of the elf from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, in fact. You might think I'm kidding, but he wanted to be a dentist and so did I when I was little. And that's his haircut. So don't get confused. Cool, here we go up. Some more paintings. I'm gonna walk up from the Basement. Mike Payton was here. I don't know Whoa, if he still Mike. is. Mike, awesome. That's cool. And got a little merch room up in here. Some t shirts and some books, other books that we didn't show you. There's a whole bunch of books on my website and t shirts you can order. And these, my good friend Ziggy. In England, who owns Monster Press, made these for me. Very great job. Silk screen in full color. Real silk screen, nice and soft. Eco shirts. Way to go, Ziggy. Check them out on here, at Monster Press. And some small works, some prints, some books, some stickers, some zines. Some of that stuff's not on my site because it's too small to deal with, but is here in the studio. Got some small little painted over prints. Nice affordable thing for people when they come to the studio. They are on my website. Some of them, most of them. If you see anything in the video that you want, feel free, you know. <laughs> you might be one of my friends that make you a special deal for you. If you're nice. <laughs> and don't ask me goofy questions about silly stuff that they don't care about. <laughs> oh, this is my dog. She's wonderful. <laughs> Thing, but uh, the group of work, not the thing, I don't even know. 
But yeah, this guy's got some stuff on the back, which is cool. <clears throat> Pressing on a glass house, separating wise men from fools, triangles crying strings, walking mountain, divining rods, interrupted by TV antennas, pyramids and horseshoes, hydra, illusions in its fingers, charming snakes. What does a diamond mean? Diamonder, axes and horseshoes. So, you know, some of the stuff is abstract and as it is, but then if you thought about it for a minute, you might be like, ooh, triangles crying strings. You might not know what that means, but for me, the triangles were the idea of empire or building or, con you know, building and controlling money, which controls other people. So the triangles are crying strings. There's all these strings attached. That might have been when you got your uh, stimulus check. I'm sure there's some strings attached or something. That kind of an idea, you know, not super direct to that, but he's got this magical box here. You can see the snakes coming in. There was so many different zones of this. This was like a very prominent, important face and figure earlier on in the piece. Hidden on his arm, you see the ax that I was referring to, axes and horseshoes. On my hand, you see a horseshoe that I might've worked at and been referring to. Um, so, you know, sometimes me and the people in the paintings are friends. Sometimes we're the same person, sometimes we're not. But uh, yeah, all this works really fresh. This guy just finished like a couple days ago. He, he was a paint over from a couple years ago. I can't remember. I wonder what he says on the back. He might say something. I don't know if I put anything new on him. I can't remember. Oh, look at that. So there's the old stuff wobbling right angles when people became pyramids understanding the pull of weight and space and then the new stuff was stained glass from discarded fragments and this is telling you which way the painting goes because sometimes people read this and then they hang my painting like this and i go into the <laughs> gallery and i'm like what the are you kidding me you thought it went that way I'm like oh my god why did you oh i didn't even realize oh it is wait oh when you flip it over Oh my God, it's kind of like a temple guy. How didn't I see that? And I just go, I don't know. I guess it's pretty abstract. <laughs> now I probably do something bad and get in trouble. Uh, uh, this I thought was pretty cool. I, I stuck these two up. This is like brand new, like a week ago or something. And this guy's like a lion to me and there's like another lion in here. and whatever but uh the main thing was i it was funny when i was downstairs cleaning up i saw this guy from 2018 and it's not like i really make reoccurring characters or not at least not on purpose so this is like a nice accidental reoccurring character where he here he is a little younger he's getting a little older over here it's like two years which it's not that much when you're like 12 to 14 but when you're 44 to 46 oh you're getting old that's me not you i'm not really getting old. sue thinks yeah. you're funny Good, Sue. I'm trying to at least try to have some fun because otherwise you come in and you're like either a spaz or you're really uptight and then the other one of those are really my vibe. I'm either like having fun or I'm kind of like leave me alone. And I didn't think that was good for the video, so. Uh, this cactus piece is pretty sweet. All these different cactuses. I'm not quite exactly sure why I keep painting them, but I sure have been enjoying them. Um, and I think maybe it has to do with like, you know, going nowhere and being kind of isolated and desolate like a desert. Feeling. I'm not trying to be negative, but I think that's kind of what's stimulating it because it's coming across in a bunch of my works. This uh, the other guy on the side, he has it on his hand. And I don't know if I need these other works up here, really, but. You're halfway through, so. Cool, I'm halfway through, so I'm in a demo. Um, I could have done that earlier or later, but I think it's a good time. People seem to like that. Hopefully, you guys are into it. It doesn't seem like anybody's got any questions. So good. So I got these two pieces over here. I figured I'd go to the most extreme and interesting parts of my process, which is either bringing things together, forcing things that are disconnected to come together, or breaking apart masses of stuff. And both of these are pieces that I'm not necessarily stuck on. I've just been working on them, working on and off. Actually, that one in the middle there above the blank board, I don't know if I call it stuck, but I haven't done anything to it in about two weeks. I built it up to that point and liked it, and then just didn't really know what to do, so I kind of left it there. So now's a good time to kind of break free from that. People often ask, what do you do when you get stuck? You guys aren't asking, so I'm telling. You just start trying to either create new activity or break it into a new shape, create a big difference. So just to antagonize myself, I kind of saw this as a crow two weeks ago, why I didn't allow myself to put a beak on there. He goes, wait, it's not a crow, it's a mockingbird. No, maybe it's a parrot. Wait. 
And if I don't like the first beak, I just start drawing other possible beaks. I don't like any of them. A lot of it for me is in relation to the eye, seeing how that affects the expression of the creature. All those beaks looked a little too goofy for me. Maybe I was just being too rammy or maybe I was just being stupid, not paying attention. But I find that, you know, it's kind of 50-50. You could try real hard and you could mess up five times or you could just whack around like this and you could get it right the first time or the fifth time or never. So you might as well kind of have fun and be loose. And that's, that's one of my main objectives. Maybe like I was saying, I'll, I'll add another interest over here. Faces are often pretty dominant or eyes are a great start to a face because you know, anything has eyes. It doesn't have to be a human face. It could be an animal face, but it antagonizes that as soon as I put those eyes there, that kind of looks like a mouth or a nose. It was just a circle before. So it's about creating difference. And uh, you know, some of it at this point I expect, so I have to go deeper and deeper to find the unexpected, which is what I really like. I like to not know off and on, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll know what I'm painting and sometimes I don't, but I like to get to a point where definitely things just don't make sense and I'm forced to make new sense of them because that's when you're asking your self questions and you're kind of, you know, dipping into the land of magic and self divination where, you know, you're choosing these choices for some kind of reason, even if they seem random or even if they are, you're interpreting them in your way. And that's kind of your strength to really find out information about yourself or other things. And I don't know, for me, that's a great part of the process. It's, it's just as inspiring as the imagery at times. And at the end of the story, sometimes I'll find out some really good information. You know, that's nothing epic, but it's, it's antagonistic. I'm not where I was. I have to do something with it. I've disrupted what it was and have to kind of pour some kind of new move. So I need to do the big stuff and do some breaking apart or grabbing. Mm, color, I don't know. Let's see. Not white, not black, maybe blue. I don't know. I guess I'll try. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you have a great idea right away. Sometimes you don't. <clears throat> so I'm just mixing up some blue. Usually what I'll do is mix a couple versions of a color or a couple colors or, or get lucky and like the first one and go, ooh, that looks like it's going to go good there. But I don't just make a color and go, ooh, that's going to go there unless that's the mode I'm in and I'm doing that on purpose just to force who knows what. In this case, you know, I'm on the clock, so I'm just gonna jump at it. This is good enough. Basically, it's a nice medium tone, and I don't see too much of that in the painting. So I think it'll, it'll, you know, add, add a layer or a tonal kind of variation. Even if I don't do anything good, I'll at least get a variation in a color that's light to dark somewhere in the middle. Someone asked what you were using earlier, and that was just a colored pencil, black colored <clears> pencil. <throat> this is acrylic paint. Yeah, non-toxic acrylic, geared for little kids so that they don't get poisoned by paint when they put it on their hands. And I like to paint with my hands a lot too, so that's why I use it. I started with it and I never changed. I actually tried to change and uh, didn't really like the other paint too much. I just threw out some paint, or no, I didn't, it's here. And I got back in about 2008 and it went bad <laughs> since 2008 and I didn't use it all. Meanwhile, these things, I use like two of these a month, one a month at least. Why did this take me 12 years to use? Cause I didn't like it. So you see, I kind of grabbed some new form image. It ships around the composition. It's like, basically it's like if I've been stuck here, I need to see something new. And unstuck myself is the biggest thing I want to do. Uh, do I want this bird? I don't know. Let's try and grab his beak and attach it to him. I grabbed some beak that wasn't even one of the ones I drew, but I kind of like the shape. You could test it out by making some bird noises to see what kind of bird he is if you want. Or you don't have to. You guys trying that at home? What kind of bird is it? Does anybody know? Since you're not asking me questions, I'm gonna ask you. What's your favorite animal? Fine. <laughs> I don't like animals. That's what somebody said to me once.
and then two late days later I was in a class and I was signing everybody's book and drawing their favorite animal in their book. And what do you think happened? That same person came up to me and he said, you didn't draw an animal in my book. I said, you said you hated animals. He said, no, I didn't. And five people from the class said, yeah, you did. Um, Mike Payton says macaw. Macaw, nice, good choice. Chicken, somebody chicken. else said. Well, we can make it a chicken. And then Will posted a emoji with heart eyes. Ooh, I like you too, Will. <laughs> Magpie. Looks, Magpie, I like that word. Looks like a pra-petarmigan. I don't know, I can't. I don't know, that's a big <laughs> word for us. We're simple people. <laughs> Crow, chicken. Well, it says penguin. Penguin, ooh, nice. I could bust that into a penguin Ooh, that's quick. definitely a penguin. I'll do it real fast for you guys. So see, like, here you go. This is your chance to interact during the studio tour where I just say, penguin. Nice flipper arm there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of penguin are you? Magpie penguin. I don't even know what a magpie is, but I like it because it kind of sounds like food. It has the word pie in it. Well, Rowan's here. Jamie's whoa. here. Jamie Tilly. Whoa, Jamie Tilly. Whoa, Rowan. Do the other side of the thing. So see, there you go. All of a sudden you took that big clump of stuff that's been sitting here for two weeks. And finally, like you guys ever do that at your house? Like your room's just a big mess and then you take that big pile of stuff and then you organize it into the shape of a penguin. No. There we go. So, you know, that's not finished or anything, but like kind of shows you really drastically and quickly how, how, how force all that, whatever it was, into this and then the background starts to kind of happen by itself by pushing it back. I don't mean, who knows, I might turn this into something, but even in this state, you took what was a clump of mountains, turned it into a penguin and created distance between and a background. I always hated backgrounds. I've been a drawer since I could hold a pencil, but I um, never really liked doing backgrounds. I like doing faces and shapes and bodies and whatever, animals, but never got into them. And then when I started painting, kind of realized this and that made me really happy because I didn't have to figure the background out. It kind of figures itself out on accident. In this case up here, I think I like a lot of what's there. I mean, who knows once I start working at it, what will happen. But um, when I like a bunch of what's there, I try to force it into a giant shape and use it all and reconfigure it. So I'm, I'm just gonna use the same blue. It's opposite to the colors that are in there. So it's a decent choice. Um, but you know, and since I'm in, in kind of a hustle mode, I could always fix it later. I'm the king of mistakes. That's kind of how I see it. It's all about being able to fix a mistake. That's what keeps you from getting stressed out or uptight with your painting style and zone and interaction. And I don't really want to be uptight when I paint. There's enough of that crap in life. I want to have as much fun as I can. So this is the way I found to do it. That remains fun and expressed. Huh? Coming on the other side of you, just a little oh, yeah. easier. Um, I mean, you have some questions here. I don't know sure. if you feel like yeah, whatever. digging in. Um, I'll just read them to you and decide what you want to answer. Someone's cool. asking, how do you know when it's done? Someone's asking how you start a painting. Um, let's see. How did you, oh, someone said, how did you start selling your work? eBay. And well, actually a tattoo shop on accident. And then uh, more of a comment. Someone just said every time you paint over something, it gives them a little heart attack. Good. Your heart must be good because you've already had how many heart attacks? I actually run a program to create strong hearts. It's called Strong Hearts with Art. No, not really, <laughs> just joking. Uh, <laughs> sounded pretty good though, right? Um, how do I know a painting's finished? When it's perfect and it's awesome and there's nothing I would change, there's nothing I feel needs to be added, nothing I feel like is distracting me. I feel like the colors are as good as they could possibly be. I feel like I'm guiding the viewer through the painting with my levels of contrast and color and size elements so that they look at the particular area I'd like them to look at first and then kind of move throughout a painting. So, you know, like in this piece, I just think all these colors, I love the structure of this. It's an unfamiliar structure, shape. I've never made this exact shape. It's got fragments of what I like. I just like the division. I like the organization of the spaces. I feel like it's got a really nice tone range from white to black with so much in between that you've got variation. 
It's not like globby. There's like contrast and definition to all the areas within the piece. And you know, just, it's a gut feeling. Like I like it, I feel done. I feel like it means something important to me. What does this even mean? I don't know. It just feels like some weird structure building. It's got an expression. It's got expression within the faces, within the building. And it just pleases me and feels completely real to me. Like I didn't know it was coming and it's just truly different and, and you know, interesting to me, I guess is a great word too. So that's one way. A lot of times what I do is I overdo it to test it, to make sure it feels done. When I think it doesn't need anything, I start adding stuff anyway to see if I'm wrong. I start subtracting more than I think I need to sometimes and build it back and forth, back and forth until I hit a real feeling of perfection. So that's the finish. What was that other question? There was some other one that I didn't answer. Um, I don't know, but it says, is it about specific things or did it take shape intuitively? <laughs> you see what I'm doing here, guys? I have no idea what I'm doing. So yeah, it's intuitive. I'm going on my gut and what I see and if I like it. And like, I did this to be funny. Maybe later I'll really like it. There'll be some magical internal thing that'll be like, ah, oh, I was really thinking about penguins or maybe not. In which case, I'll destroy the parts that I don't think are relevant, leave the parts I do think are relevant or beautiful, and then continue on to put new imagination with old imagination to find a truly new idea. And, you know, it's basically, it's very instinctual to me. I prefer that word. I don't know. I think they kind of mean the same thing, but I kind of don't, because I kind of feel more like, I just look at things at real base, you know, like an animal. What do I like and what do I don't like in the painting? And keep it that simple. So it doesn't get too like fluttered down with like the color of my soul or red is my aura and stuff. And nothing wrong with that. That's all cool if that's what works for people. But for me, I keep it, I'm saying it because for me, the mechanism is very much, I like it, I don't like it. And I'll understand it later. I don't try to understand it until I truly understand it. Or, and I don't, if I don't for a while, that's cool too. Then I just don't understand it and I sit with it until it comes to me because pretending you understand something you don't doesn't seem to make sense to me but striving to understand something you don't seems educational to me. So that's kind of the zone I look for. And I kind of feel like that surpasses some of what I find other people talking about when they speak of intuition and whatever. They don't really have a, a deeper assessment of the thing and, and mine's mixed with that. Not saying it's better or worse, just saying that's what I think differentiates my approach from that. But it's also very similar to some of the elements in that approach. It's two o'clock. Sounds like it's two o'clock, guys. So, you know, if you got a last question, cool. I'll obviously answer it. If not, I guess I'm gonna bag out of here and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll be back some other time to do a similar thing. Jennifer Mercedes said, you're so smart. Oh, thank you. You should see me try and read. <laughs> not so smart, but yeah, no, thanks dude. Appreciate that. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming.